everyone, it's Heather from Buffering Saint, and today we are on a chapter. I should have looked at this before I started filming. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Chapter 19, our summer book club, which was put together by Heather from A Catholic Mom's Life, and we are reading a handbook for Catholic moms by Lisa Hindi. And this chapter is about Mary, our mother Mary. So I'm going to give like three tips on how you can deepen your relationship with Mary. So I have a, coming from a Protestant background, I have a interesting relationship, I guess, because like I was so anti-Catholic before. I mean, I guess not so anti-Catholic, but I was anti-catholic before I became catholic so but I did a whole video on that already and I did a whole video on that in regards to Mary so I'll post that video below so you can check that out if you want to this video is just about how you can different ways you can strengthen your relationship with Mary my first tip would be to find one or two devotionals or sacrament sacramentals that you feel called to like research them because there are so many Marian devotions or sacramentals that you can do. Of course, there's a rosary. I would suggest to pray the rosary every day, like make the rosary one of your sacramentals and then pick another one or two that you like. So like for me, I try to pray the rosary every day. I try because I don't always do it, but I do try. And then uh, I also wear the brown scapular every day and I have an Our Lady of Guadalupe charm necklace. And then I have this Choose Life bracelet. It's got Our Lady Undoer of Knots on it. So I have those things and I just did my research on them and I just chose some that I felt called to. There's so many. There's of uh, like the brown scapular, there's the miraculous medal, um, there's the three Hail Marys to get your day started. There's so many that you can do. Uh, just look some up and pick one or two that you feel called to and start doing them as often as you can. If you need like some quick easy tips on how to get the rosary prayed every day, because like I said, it's something that it's actually easier for me to get the rosary in every day when I'm at when I'm working because I'm off right now uh, for summer, but school starting in a couple weeks. So I've talked about this before, but praying the rosary when you're in the car, ha having it on uh, your phone, playing out loud. I've heard of other people doing it while they exercise or do it first thing in the morning when you wake up or just break it up throughout the day. You don't have to do the whole rosary at once. You can just break it up throughout the day. And I always have a rosary in my purse. So I have this little, um, I have two rosary pouches and I'll just switch them out for whichever one I feel like having that day. I have one that's Our Lady of Lords little rosary pouch with a rosary in it. And then I have another one that's got Our Lady of Mount Carmel on it with rosary in it and so just to, I guess depending on my mood I'll like put one in my purse whichever one so I always have one on me there's a ton and ton of videos on how to pray the rosary that you can watch but there's this really cool video and I actually just watched it again with my husband by it's a it's a talk by father Don Calloway on the power of the rosary and or it is goes over it goes through the history of the rosary and it's a really good one it's long but it's really good so i'll post that down below too if you want to go check that one out so my second tip would be to learn about her apparitions so there are of course the ones that are really well known there's um our lady of fatima our lady of lords our lady of guadalupe those apparitions are all pretty well known but there are a bunch of other ones that you might not know as much about. And you should definitely go look them up. There's Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which is probably, you probably know that one. I actually just did a video on that one a couple weeks ago. There's Our Lady of Las Lajas, which is a really cool story. It happened in Colombia. So you, you really should go look that one up. If I find links for all these things, like YouTube videos or articles, I'll post them down below so that they'll just be they'll just be down there in my description box. But definitely that one is really cool. So go check that one out. There's Our Lady of Cabejo, which happened in Africa in the 1980s, I believe. Um, Our Lady of Good Help, which is is 
the only approved Marian apparition that happened in the United States. I think it happened in Minnesota or Wisconsin. One of those. That one is a cool story. And there's one, there's another one that I just learned about when I was re-watching that video with my husband called It's Our Lady of the Rosary of San Nicolas. And this happened in Argentina in the 80s too, and it's been approved by the bishops. Our Lady appeared to Gladys Caroga de Moda. I don't know if I said her name right, but um, that one is really interesting too. So go check out those apparitions. It's super important to learn about our lady's apparitions because she gives like her wishes. She, she tells us what she wants us to do when she comes and visits or she appears to, to who she appears to. So do your research on marrying apparitions. And then the last thing that I would say to do is to do a Marian consecration. And I used this book. I just finished mine um, last month. And the book is really good. It's by Michael E. Gately. And he's a priest, of course. And then it goes into detail about mary and it talks about a couple of different saints who were who are considered marian saints and how they consecrated their lives to mary and uh if you're not sure what a marian consecration is it's it's in short terms all it is is consecrating yourself to the heart of jesus through mary so that's what marian consecration is so that is simplifying it but that's basically what it is. So these are my tips for how to get a deeper relationship with Mary. So you can go to her for anything. She is your mother in heaven. She wants you to go to her. She loves all of us as her children. Jesus gave her to us on the cross. It was one of the last things he says. It's like one of my favorite. It's becoming one of my favorite quotes. When he tells John on the cross, he says, behold your mother. And then he tells her, behold your son. Jesus did that. Jesus gave us his mom as our mom. So those are my three tips. If you like my video, subscribe and like, comment, do all those things. And I can't remember if I said this already. Did I already say go to go watch the other ladies' videos? Oh, the book. Yeah, I didn't say that, right? I don't think so. Okay, go check out all the other ladies who are participating in the book club, and I will see y'all next time.